confinement feeding system just very simply is an area that we bring animals in, we confine them to a given location, we stop them walking around. Uh, it's different to a, to a feedlot. Feedlot is where you're giving them a full feed ration, we're feeding for production and, and trying to hit targets and markets. There's different legal requirements with a feedlot, whereas a confinement feeding area really fits into to the um, set planning um, and, and that's where it sits. We do see people that will use it for a bit of production feeding, but that's more to, for lambs and things like that, where we talk about getting that growth up of those animals so that we're actually getting away from some health issues, trying to get them big enough, heavy enough, so that we can do other things with those type of animals. But generally that confinement feeding is bringing these animals into a confined area onto a location where we're supplying those animals with feed, feeding for maintenance or just a little bit of growth and development uh, is, is really what we're looking at. By bringing these animals in into a confined area, they tend to be better managed, people are seeing it, but also people are spending actually less time out feeding every day. So there's the social side of things, plus the animal side of things where we're seeing that bit of better management of the feeding and also those animals because we've got them in that area. If things go wrong, they can get them into the yard, start to do things, whereas sometimes out in the paddock, we tend to see that not quite happening. They're not the degree of uh, watching those animals, if you like. Uh, whereas when you've got them in, and, and I know when I've been at this place here before, we could see some of the shy feeders. It was really easy to see which ones they were, work out which ones they were, and then talk about possible management of those animals. Look, if we can stop these animals going out and damaging our perennial pastures, it's a win-win situation. We really do see in, in a drought situation that animals get out and around. They spend a lot of time trying to graze what available pastures there. Um, really that ground cover, trying to protect that ground cover and particularly we saw that just recently in this environment, not so much here but in other locations where we get those big sudden downpours. By keeping that ground cover there we're able to protect those soils, we stop some of that runoff into those dams and some of the potential issues that we see. The three issues that we've got to look at whenever we're feeding animals is, is obviously management of those animals, looking for the non-feeders, those shy feeders, trying to work out which ones they are. Um, if you're feeding on a trough, that tends to get rid of a lot of the issues, whereas people tend to trail feed in confinement. Uh, you know, there can be a couple of issues that tend to pop up. So I'm really not a fan of feeding uh, on the ground in confinement. I much prefer people to feed in troughs. I know people say we do it, we get away with it. Uh, in my job I go out to enough jobs to say please feed in a trough or some type of system that keeps it off the ground. It tends to be the big one. The other one that where I go out and see there's, there's a few issues occurring is when someone's broken one of the fundamental rules. They've put too many animals in a, in a given area, they haven't allowed enough trough or, or feed a space for the number of animals in there, we'll start to see a tail of those type animals. And the other one that we see is, is when we're trying to put, uh, well, if you like it, a, a halfback with a prop forward and trying to get the halfback to compete with the front row for feed. Like with like's pretty important. You don't want to try and make, make it a competition at that feeding. That can be helped with trough space and allowing them more time and feeding every couple of days. But really, you want to try and go with like with like. Don't try and put you know, a 200 kilo calf with a 150 kilo calf. 200 kilo calf's just always going to out competing. Look, if you're interested in it, contact us at the local land services. We've got a team around the state we can help you. There's also a number of resources that we now have. We've got the confinement feeding manual, which is uh, free and available. You can Google it up. Uh, we've also got staff like myself that can really help with the technical side of things. Also reach out and have a look at other people who are doing it. Go and have a look.